Can I begin by acknowledging the Larrakia people and acknowledge their lands, their waters, their elders past, present and emerging. But I also want to acknowledge many of the people in this room who I began a journey with when we were in our 20s. When we fought many battles on many fronts to affect the changes that we've seen realised. When I worked with Oriel Green and Isabel Adams in Aboriginal education, uh, we talked about what we thought should be the future. But none of us ever considered that one of us would end up in Cabinet. And that when you take those journeys, you make some tough decisions. But you retain the integrity of who you are and the way in which you engage and the way in which you listen. And what's important is seeing many of you take a journey in life that is impacted on the outcomes for our people. It doesn't matter where they live. We've still much to do. I want to share with you that on the Sunday that Scott Morrison rang me, Anna and I were looking at a photograph that Ben Wyatt had posted about his father. And he'd made a comment on there about his dad and the stolen generation. And it was a really nice photo and a nice comment because I know that Ben has been tracing back his dad's history and learning what Cedric did. And Anna and I talked about that because my mother was a stolen generation, a member of the stolen generation. And then at some point she said to me, go and hang out the washing. So I went outside and she said, take your phone with you in case the PM rang. And the PM rang. And he said to me, mate, and at this point I was thinking I've got aged care and Indigenous health and I'm going to continue the work that I've started. But he said, you've done a great job. I want to give you a different challenge. He said, you've got a good heart. He said, I want to make you the Minister for Indigenous Australians, not the Minister for Indigenous Affairs, he said Indigenous Australians. It took me about two and a half minutes to respond because having had that discussion and knowing what I had as a journey, those emotions all uh, sort of welled up and I struggled to answer him. And he said, I take it by your silence, that is a yes. And I managed to then get out the yes. But the most important thing was, it wasn't Indigenous Affairs. It was Indigenous Australians because he wanted to make it about the people of this nation. And he is committed. But the awesome thing is that when I sat at the cabinet table for the first time, what really struck me is I was sitting with a group of people who make the decisions for this nation. I've had the opportunity now of sitting at that table to do it. But what heightened my optimism was in the last federal election, over 20 Indigenous Australians stood for seats. And that's a tremendous change to what was before I went into the House. We had Neville Bonner, who I greatly admired and respected, Aidan Ridgway. And then I was the first in the House of Reps. And then Labor, through Julia Gillard, appointed Nova Perez. And then it's now swelled to five of us in there. We have the capability, and we've always had the capacity, to do the things that are important to us. And I was reminiscing with Pat Anderson just a short while ago, the journey that she and I've had just in education alone. In those days, we were probably seen as rat bags because we challenged the status quo to affect change. And I want to acknowledge every one of you for the contribution that you make to the lives of our people through the way in which you deliver either frontline services that are absolutely critical, through to those who are doing the research to identify what are the critical elements that we have to address, firstly, as Indigenous Australians in terms of owning our destiny and being determining, but more importantly, affecting the professions that provide the services to do with our social, emotional and well-being. 
That, when you consider 1972, when Gough Whitlam established the Department of Aboriginal Affairs, was the embryonic stages for government investment in a more significant way than we'd ever seen. I wish you well in your deliberations because it would be good to hear some of the speakers because I know some of the work that has been done. I think of the first Aboriginal doctor who I had the privilege of uh, meeting not long after she graduated, although I knew the family, and that was Sandra Eads, and then the number of doctors who followed after. What I'm hoping is that when I finish my time, that there'll be more who will step in and take on the roles that are important. And it's an honour to be in the same chamber as Linda Burney. Linda, uh, as many of you know, was heavily involved in the Aboriginal Education Consultative Group structures of New South Wales and was a significant leader in that area. And to have a colleague across the chamber means you've got a soulmate that you can talk to who understands the challenges. And then Pat Senator Patrick Dodson and Senator Malandiri and now with Jackie Lambie coming back in, there's five, and we meet. I'll just share with you that Warren and Patrick and I used to meet once a fortnight, and I would brief them on what I was doing in Aboriginal health, because I want to have a bipartisan approach to the directions that we need to walk as members of the Australian Parliament. I'm on a journey now to speak to all of the ministers for Aboriginal Affairs to look at shared understandings and shared directions, regardless of our political stance. And I want to encourage people within politics to listen much more than what they do, to sit with our people and to have the conversations that are real and meaningful. But it is a privilege to be in that, to be in the position that I am. Uh, but I will use that opportunity to walk with all of you. I cannot do it alone. What I need is our leadership and our communities to walk with me. We will have our debates, we'll have our differences sometimes on some issues. But the important thing is that when you have strength of unity, you can achieve significant outcomes in a way that is hard to challenge. And so I'm looking forward to my three years in office what I've really appreciated is the number of non-Indigenous Australians who've come up to me and just said, here's my card, I'm prepared to walk with you. And yesterday, a minister in a state said, just tell me what I need to do, I don't want you to fail. He said, I want you to be successful regardless of your politics. He said, the symbolism and the strength of what we can do together will make a difference. And so they are prepared to do that. We have a unique opportunity. And in a sense, it's like being the conductor of a band. I have the opportunity to wave the baton. But you can't have the music without the orchestra. And all of you in that journey are members of that orchestra for the changes that we need to seek and achieve. So I wish you well in your deliberations. I'm here for two days in Darwin. This is the first jurisdiction that I'm spending two days with. I'm meeting a number of people. John Patterson has been fortunate enough to get two appointments with me. He wanted a third, but I had to decline. But look, enjoy your deliberations. It's really great catching up with a number of you uh, that I've had the privilege to talk to. And if we're anywhere at all, never hesitate to come and say good day. Uh, it's important. Thank you all very much.